it's Morgan. So today I'm going to share with you my recipe for these five ingredient maple tahini sugar cookies with a vegan royal icing. So I'm starting off with the cookies and I'm using some oat flour, some maple syrup, some tahini, and if you don't have tahini, you can totally sub it for any other nut or seed butter. And then I'm using some baking powder and some salt, and then I'm just mixing that all together until a ball of dough forms and if you want the full recipe with all the exact measurements and stuff like that um, I will have a link in the description to my blog where I will share this full recipe <laughs> so once a it like started to form together I just put it into some plastic wrap and you want to like put it pretty tightly in this you know keep it all together before you put it in the fridge and it doesn't have to go in the fridge for very long just like 30 minutes to an hour you could leave it in there overnight um, if you wanted to for some reason, but you know, and then while that was in the fridge, I made my icing, which I just used some powdered sugar, some aquafaba, which is actually the secret ingredient. That is what makes it your royal icing instead of just like regular icing. And then I added some almond extract. You can also do vanilla or just leave the extract out. And if you don't know what aquafaba is, it's like that chickpea liquid. It's basically like the water from a can of chickpeas. Um, if you don't have a can of like, if you buy dry beans, there's also a way you can make it with that. Just look into it. Look online. There's, you know, other ways you can make it if you don't have a can of chickpeas. You do need chickpeas though. So, you know. And yeah, so this is a little bit shinier than your typical like icing where you just use like milk and powdered sugar. So yeah, and then once the dough was finished in the fridge, I just rolled it out and I used a sheet of parchment paper so that nothing stuck to the rolling pin and just it just made it a lot easier and you want to go i did about a quarter of an inch thick you could do it thicker or thinner you would just want to adjust the baking time according to how thin you roll out your dough it really doesn't matter um and then i am just cutting it out i used a mason jar like as in the cookie cutter was shaped like a mason jar super cute and then these little like candy corn shapes but you could totally do whatever you want um, as you can see, like my mason jar cookies were kind of big and the the candy corns were smaller. So I think I got about like eight cookies or nine, something like that. But this recipe would make anywhere from eight to 12, depending on how big your cookie cutter is. So I just transferred those to a baking sheet that I lined with a non-stick like silicone, like a sill pat, but mine's pink and it's from Ikea. So yeah. And then once I, I just like kept rolling out the dough until I couldn't cut out any more shapes. And there they are on the baking sheet going into the oven. And when they're done, they will look like this. As you can see, they do not spread at all when they bake, which is super nice. And then you just want to like let them cool in the pan for like literally only three minutes. Um, they cool down really quickly. So I just transferred them to a wire cooling rack until they were completely cool before I frosted them. And then I just used my frosting, I or my icing, whatever, frosting, icing. I'm not totally positive what the difference is between frosting and icing, if I'm gonna be honest, but I'm pretty sure that this is icing. So I dyed some of it orange and some of it yellow so that I can make my little candy corns. And this stuff is a lot thicker than your typical icing. Um, so, you know, be patient with it, spread it around and it likes to stay exactly where you put it. It's not super easy to spread, so you might need to add, you know, a little bit more if you're missing a spot or whatever. So yeah, and then after I frosted them how I wanted them, I just set them aside to let the icing completely set. It doesn't take too long. It's definitely less than 20 minutes. Um, so yeah. And then once they set, they're completely hard and um, they stay set at room temperature. You don't have to like put them in the fridge or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's super nice. And then for the mason jars, I didn't want to like draw anything on them, you know, make them look cute because I didn't think I was skilled enough to pull that off. So I kind of just, you know, put a color on there. This one I did orange and then I just topped it with some sprinkles, you know, no big deal. They kind of, it makes them almost not even look like mason jars anymore. So yeah, if you guys have any good ideas for decorating mason jar cookies, let me know. Um, not so much Halloween ideas anymore because almost not Halloween anymore but you know maybe for Christmas if you have any good mason jar Christmas ideas let me know 
So yeah, just topped it with sprinkles and then yeah, those are the finished cookies. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And as always, the full recipe with all of the exact measurements and ingredients will be linked in the description down below. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.